Afterward, Jesus appeared again to his disciples by the Sea of Galilee. It happened this way. Simon Peter, Thomas, called Didymus, Nathaniel from Cana of Galilee, and the sons of Zebedee, and two other disciples were together. And Peter said, I'm going fishing. And they said to him, we'll go with you. So they went out and got into the boat, but that night they caught nothing. Early in the morning, Jesus stood on the shore, but disciples did not recognize that it was Jesus. He called out to them, friends, have you caught any fish? You know, it's, it's bad enough when you've been out fishing and you don't catch anything. But when somebody says, did you catch any fish, it kind of like, uh, you know. Uh, no, they answered, he said. And throw your nets on the right side of the boat and you'll find some. When they did, they were unable to haul the net in because of the large number of fish. Then the disciple, whom Jesus loved, said to Peter, It is the Lord. And as soon as Simon Peter heard him, he said, It is the Lord. And he wrapped his outer garment around him, for he had taken it off. And he jumped into the water. The other disciples followed in the boat, towing the net full of fish. They were not far from the shore, about an hour, a hundred yards. Then they landed. They saw a fire burning, and there were fish on it. And some, and some bread. And Jesus said, bring some of the fish that you have just caught. And Simon Peter climbed aboard and dragged it in. It was full of fish, 153, but even so many did not tear the net. And Jesus said, come and have breakfast. May God bless the reading from the word. The key to abundant life, that, that's, that's what I sought to find in my own personal walk with Jesus Christ after, after my conversion. And, and I went, went a lot of, lot of places, uh, and I had a lot of, lot of experience. Have ever, any of you ever been to an outside revival? Probably not. That, that isn't popular in this part of the, uh, the world. But what they'll do is they go to a, a lumber mill, and they'll fill... Uh, underneath the tent with sawdust. You ever heard the expression sawdust trail? <sighs> Bunch of Yankees. <laughs> a a, a, a sawdust saw trail where revivalism is, was really an important part of, of the Christian culture down, down south is that they would bring in an evangelist and usually a tent and the evangelist would, would preach about the gospel of Jesus Christ and invite people forward. And, and today we often have evangelists that are healing evangelists and there's signs and wonders that, that follow the, these men in, in ministries. And um, I have to admit that I've walked the sawdust trail so many times that, that, that as I've sat under the preaching of, of the gospel, I've been touched and touched. And, and I want to say well, part of the reason that I'm in Grandview United Methodist Church is that historically, uh, the preaching in, from this pulpit has touched my life time and time and time again. And, and, and oftentimes at the end of service, I, I want to say, did you hear what he said? Uh, that, la last week, I, I had the opportunity to uh, listen to Alec. Alec's a, a pretty good preacher. Say amen. amen. I, 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 I love hearing Alec preach. And that's on tape, and Alec will review the service. And, and so uh, <laughs> I didn't ask you to raise your hand so he could find out who likes his, his preaching. But, but last week I had a chance to listen to Alec uh, four times at, as he preached, I think I can, I think I can, I think I can. The, the, the reason that, 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 I, that I needed to hear that service is, is that, that I needed to actualize the message that he spoke. He wasn't preaching to you all, but he was preaching to me and saying, Carl, God thinks you can, and with, with God's help, I think you can. And the important thing is that you think you can. 
every, every time that we have communion, it's God's way of reaching into our world and, and, and touching it. It's, and the que question gets to be, do, do we take God's touch and simply self-actualize that? I, I mean, like, uh, we take food in and, 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 it, and it nourishes the body, and that's, that's really, really important. But the real issue is, what do we do with that energy? What do we do with God's touch when he comes and hits our, our lives? I have found that the real abundant life not, doesn't simply come in the midst of being touched, but taking that experience and reaching out to others. One, one of the unique qualities of, of Grandview United Methodist Church, and, and, and I'm thankful that, that I'm a part of, of this church, it is that, that as we as a congregation are touched, they give us opportunities, like that word opportunities, to actualize God's touch in our life as we reach out to, to others. We, we do that with, with the school program. And in the mid, midst of the school program, and where the kids are going to be coming in for a couple weeks helping with, with worship services, it's not us, simply us reaching out into the kids' worlds but you know what they reach into and, and touch us. You, you, you ever have the opportunity to do a kids program up here? Or a kids program in, in your church? And, and, and the kids are not sometimes... We, we all know that kids are supposed to be perfect all the time, right? Amen. And... and, 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 and you never did a kids program. <laughs> but, 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 but in the midst of their coming, in, in the midst of them being who they are, children, they touch our lives. And, 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 and that, that, that touch changes us and it changes them. We also talk about being in mission. One of, one of the things I've really enjoyed is getting a chance to talk to people who've been to Nigeria. They seem to have a, a specialness about them uh, because they, they've been out on the forefront and, and, and there's kind of a glow, kind of a, a, an understanding. And that, that, then we do the music, and, and you have some tremendous music at Grandview United Methodist Church. Y'all didn't know this, but um, when I started coming to, to Grandview, uh, I auditioned to uh, sing with a praise band. Uh, Alec listened, and uh, he thought for a minute, and, and Alex is always a very kind, loving person, you all know that, um, and he said, Carl, I think you should sing far, far away. <laughs> um, it, it, even when, when we talk about, uh, about our prayer ministry and, 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 and reaching out, a number of you are a part of that that ministry. One of, one of the things that, that uniquely happens is that, that as people particularly dealing with cancer, a word goes to those ladies that, that, that knit and they carry prayer shawls to them as a symbol of, of, of our outgoing uh, prayer. The, the reality is, is that God loves diversity. Uh, and I'm very different than you. And you're very different than me. And, and the reason that God created you to be you and me to me is that God didn't want to fill the world with people like me. Uh, he thought that that was probably a, a, a wise idea. And the other side, he didn't create a world to be filled with people like you. Um, but, 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 but each of us have been created to create, uniquely carry the gospel. 26 years ago, uh, this time of the year, I was working at looking for a program to run in my doctorate of ministry program. Uh, and I ran across a, a little blurb, it wasn't much more than this in, a, in United Methodist magazine about prayer evangelism. It, at that point, I was pastoring a little church down in, uh, nor, uh, down in northwest, n northeast Tennessee, Kansas. Uh, a little town called Careville. I called it Careville, and they said, no, it's Careville. Careville, I, I, I learned to love those people. 
But one, one of the things that, that I ran into the, to that church is that, is that they were just a beautiful group of people, but, but the numbers of the church were dwindling. And, and the problem was, is the past, pastors always are reaching out. That, that's part of, part of our job. We may be here and we want the church to be here. And, and trying to figure out a way that I could get these people to, to reach out. And so I ran across this program dealing with prayer evangelism and started reading about prayer, and my life changed. Um, I, I, I don't have time to go into all, all those changes, but this morning what I'd like to do is I'd like to take you into a prayer, exper prayer experience. Uh, for, for, for those of you who have spent an hour, hour and a half praying this morning, you can go to sleep now, but for, for those, those of you who haven't spent your hour, hour and a half in in, in the prayer closet, and uh, oh, by by the way, there's a number of of you that 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 I've prayed for this morning all, already. One of one of the the new converts to being prayed for is Art Miller. He isn't here, and and he helped me with the, the early service, and he came in, and I was standing here, and and I looked down at, at Art. And I said, Art, I prayed for you this morning. And he looked up at me. I probably should have come down so he didn't have to look up at me. And, and, and he looked at me and he said, Carl, I prayed for you today. You know, you, you know what it's worth to have somebody care enough for you personally, and I prayed for her, and as I look around, and, and by the end of the year, I'm going to pray for all, all, all of you, because you're all very special in God's eyes. Say amen. I, I, I believe that, and God believes that. And, and in order to pray for, for larger numbers of, of people, I've, I've had to learn a lot. Um, I did my doctoral project in prayer evangelism. I have spent the last 25 years of my life reading everything I've put my hands on in relationship to prayer, been involved with, with prayer research. research. Um, so so some, some, this is some of what, what I've developed, the way that I can pray for all of those people. And, and, and you all know that in a few weeks I'll be praying for all of you. So that when you see me in church, I'll be able to reach out and say, you know, I... I prayed for you this morning. I shared God's love with you. And, and, and for me, prayer is, has come to a place that is not telling God what to do. For, for those of you who had children, particularly if there were two children, have you ever, you ever had the oldest one come to you and say, Mom, Dad, this is what my little brother or sister should be doing. You, you ever have that? Some of you have parents yet. You ever? Uh, some of you may have been that older sibling, and you, your job was to convince your mom and dad that your sister or brother weren't doing it quite the way that 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 it was. Some of you had that kind of experience in your life. Are you shaking, shaking your head? Well, one of the conversations that that I had with with God early on in this process is that, that God said that I didn't have to tell God what to do with people. God loves prodigals. I've come to love prodigals because I was a prodigal. And, and allowing God to do what God's going to do takes a whole lot of responsibility off my shoulders because God's going to do what God's going to do the way God's going to do it. And oftentimes the way God's going to do it is not the way that I was going to do it. So for, for me, deep in my heart, God has given me love. And when, when, when I pray for people, I allow that love to come out. It's plain. It, it's simple. We're going to go to the next slide. Go to the next slide. 
Okay, we're going to talk about types of prayer. Now we're going to go to the next slide. Now, there, there are different kinds, kinds of prayer. And the first kind of prayer, I compare that to uh, taking care of, of plants in the house. And, and when you're watering plants in the house, you don't want water all over the place. And I usually do that. Either my plants in the house die of not having water, or there's so much water it's running all over the, the, the table. So, but, but we're really careful about that. And a lot of our prayer lives are like that. And for those of you who haven't had your prayer time today, I want you to take a deep breath. And we're going to take a few moments. I want you to pray for yourself. You know, look at, look at all the struggles that we're going through. The stress that's facing us with our jobs. In our relationships. In our families. And I'd like to take, have you take a moment to, to, to pray for your, your mom, your dad, your grandparents, your, your sons, your daughters, your spouse, maybe your cousins you haven't seen in a while. And I'd like to have you pray for, for some of those people who are responsible for, for you being who you are today. Some of those old friends that, that you went to school with. Some of those kids that you went to college, if you went to college. The kids and family down the street. Sometimes people that, that have kind of fallen out of our, our radar. I think of, of some of my, my friends when I went back in high school and, you know, it followed what's happening with their families and some of the struggles that they're going through. And I pray for the people of Grandview United Methodist Church. All those ones that I didn't take time to pray for this morning. All those people that are so special Special to God. Special to our church and our ministry here. Okay, take another deep breath and we're going to move on to the next level. If you would open your eyes and we're going to change the slide. There, there's, a, there's a whole other level of, of praying where, where we don't focus so much on, on our own little world, but the world to which God has given us to live in. And, and, and for me, what, what's taken place is that the, the flow of love out of my heart has had to be increased because the, the prayers for those people that I pray for has gotten better, has gotten bigger. Take a couple of deep breaths. We pray for the police department. <coughs> Lord, men and, and women that put their, their lives on the line every, every day, 24-7, to make our world safe. People that go in and, and try to defuse family fights. Those, those people that, that work the streets. Those people that, that try to dispense justice and, and keep peace. We pray for, for the teachers of, of our, our own school here. Going to need a deep breath now. And, and we pray for the, the teachers in, a, in our public and private schools in this community. Lord, as they, as they look at the students and they sense the struggles and the young people that they face every day, every day, they can see the brokenness that comes out of their homes. 
They see the effects of, of poverty. They help children with handicaps, you know, whether they're physical or emotional or spiritual to overcome those handicaps. Lord, those people became teachers because you gave them a heart, a heart to care for the children of Dubuque, Iowa. We pray for the social workers in, in our community. Lord, they, they oftentimes come in and deal with, with such issues, uh, substance abuse, dysfunctional families, poverty. Lord, we, we pray for the work that they do. We pray for the doctors and, and nurses and chaplains that the service in our hospitals, particularly those that, that work in ER, particularly those that work in the cancer department, especially uh, our, our own personal doctors at, as they seek to do what's best for, for us. We're thankful for their gentle touch and their acts of kindness and appreciation. We're thankful that they stand tall in, in our aisles, hours of tribulation, comfort us, and dispense God's love and care to us. And we pray for the children. Lord, we're, we're thankful for the children that not only come here, but are coming to the schools around this community. And, and we pray for those who may be prodigals, who are brought up in, in families that didn't know God's love, as we've come to know it and experience at the church. Take another deep breath and say amen. I, I, have, a, I have a confession for you. Confession is, is good for the soul. Many, many of you know I have a, a prayer ministry that, that literally reaches around the world now. And each day, um, somewhere between four and, and ten new people come in and become a part of that network. Uh, a few, few weeks ago, a few months ago, as it was growing and, and my ability to pray was not what it should have been, uh, I boned and groaned. Um, that, that there were people coming in from Africa, from all over the place, people from Pakistan, people from the Philippines, people caught in, in poverty, uh, people that were trying to uh, put together uh, ministries in third world countries. Uh, people that didn't have anything. One of the things that's happening in those third world countries is that, that a pastor um, and, and a church starts to grow. And what, what takes place is that they'll start Sunday school classes. And we're, we're all thankful for Sunday school classes. But what would it be like for you to be a Sunday school teacher? And so, so all of a sudden you have 10, 12, uh, 14 kids coming to Sunday school class. And we feel good about that, those of you who've taught Sunday school. Uh, and, and at the end of the Sunday school hour, you realize that eight or six or eight, maybe ten of those children have wandered in from the streets. They probably didn't have breakfast or much of anything to eat. They have nowhere to go after Sunday school class. Uh, they've been abandoned living on, on the streets. And... Uh, Art was here earlier, and uh, I said, well, Art, what would you do if after uh, the kids that you were involved with and uh, taking care of them during Sunday, Wednesday evening service? Uh, I, says, I said, well, how many do you have? He said, uh, I said, had, I have three. And I said, Art, what would happen if their parents didn't show up? Uh, now, Art, without hesitation, said, 
I take them home. Um, and that, that, and that, that, that's what's happening. Uh, small, small churches, as, as they grow, uh, are becoming orphanages. You know, it, we, we look at what's happening with Ebola, which we hopefully are over the worst of that. Uh, places like Pakistan, uh, the Philippines, and I could go on and, and, and point you to people who started off with just a small Sunday school class, and, 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 and now, you know, they have 10, 15, 20, 30 kids that they're trying to feed. Uh, and, and, and these people would come and say, would, would you pray for us and would you have some financial help? And I don't have the financial help to help a number of those, those people. And in, in the midst of that, the, the conversation that, that I had with God as I moaned and groaned, uh, God, God said, you need a bigger hose. You need more love to come out of your heart when you pray for those those people. So we're we're going to go to the next slide. And and and, and I pray that that we have the kind of magnitude of, of prayer and compassion for the world that 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 we attempt to water parts of the world. We pray for for those. Let's take three deep breaths this time. Lord, we, we pray for those who are dealing with disasters, earthquakes around the world, earthquakes in, in third world countries that we have yet to even get to the communities to help them, earthquakes in our own country, large and small. We pray for those who are, are facing flooding. Uh, this, this last week, uh, according to the, the weather forecast, Houston, Texas, can brace for 10 more months of uh, storms and, and flooding. Pray for the people of Houston. We, we pray for, for people out on the, the East Coast the storms that have come through, the, the devastation that they saw to their, their homes and their communities and their schools and their churches. Give them strength to, to rebuild. We pray for those who, who, who lost their homes this last summer with, with fires. We pray for those who, who are experiencing drought. We pray for the children of, of the world. Children that may have gone to bed hungry last night. Children as we start into the Advent season that don't live in a world that has the opportunity that they can have dreams of, of plenty. Dreams of, of Christmas as we know it here. We pray, pray for them that, that they may find a way of, of getting an education, of being able to make a living and raise, raise a family. Take another deep breath. We pray for the children in, in our inner cities. The city of Chicago has had 2,300, 2,000 300 homicides and uh, children and, and young people that have been killed with the use of firearms. Lord, let there be peace on earth. Let there be peace on earth. We pray for the people of, of Syria and Iraq and Iran 
in Israel. The Bible tells us that we should pray for the peace of, of Israel. Peace of Jerusalem. Take another deep breath. And I'd like you to take, take a moment and share God's love with the world. Water it with the love out of your heart. Caring for our brothers and our sisters. Our environment. Our social structures, our political structures. Lord, let there be peace on earth. And let it start with us. And it starts, O oh Lord, as you touch us. Amen.